there folks, welcome to another Fishing Adventures and today we're back on the railway pond. Now if you did see the video that posted last week where I was fishing the match on Sunday, you'll find out it did go quite well but not as well as I had hoped so go and check that out right now. But today we're having a bit of a cheeky practice and I've got with me another fellow YouTuber and we've got a mighty pound at stake and I want to win this one because this guy is really really good. His channel is called Hooked Fishing Channel and here he is, it's John. So come on in. Yep, Scott. How are you doing, pal? Yeah, I'm good right down there, yeah. Have you brought your shiny pound coin for me to take off yet today? Yeah, there it is, <laughs> folks. That's what it's all about. Forget leagues, forget cups. I want that pound, basically. I'll make sure it's polished for you. Nice one. <laughs> so if you've not seen John's channel, go and check it out. There'll be a link above and also in the description below. So go and check it out. Get subscribed. He does a lot of match fishing. And to be honest, it makes me sick because he catches a lot of fish. And he's been rubbing it in because I don't know if you might have seen it. He caught a massive chuffing pike straight after watching my pike rigs video, to be fair. So I'm doing something right, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> but anyway, so... We're going to have a bit of a knock-up match. Uh, we've got another angler with us, a young lad called Adam, who's busily setting up now because he's slept in and he's a bit late, but never mind. Um, so we're going to just see what happens, aren't we? We've, we've yeah. got a couple of swims and we should get a few fish out. So, so as you know, Scott, I mean, it's the first time I've fished here. Um, so I wasn't entirely sure what to expect. I think I've been led a bit of a red herring by young Adam. But uh, anyway, I've plumbed up. I've probably got about six foot of depth in this particular peg. And, um, yeah, uh, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to go with, but I was going to start with a chop worm line, um, but that may develop as we go on, so we're probably going to fish two lines out at about 13 metres to start with, one to my left, one to my right, and see how we go. Yeah, I've got pretty much the same plan to be fair, I've, I've got a chop line, uh, chop worm line, I'm going to feed a few casters, although I, I made a right mess of it the last time feeding the casters in, so I'm going to hang fire with that. But what I also want to try is just a little bit of bread punch and some breadcrumb over the top of that, just to see if we can't instigate a few roach, maybe some bream on the tip. So stick around, let's see what happens, and I'm going to smash him right up, folks. So stick around. All right there, folks, so it's a game on. Um, got the gear pretty much set up, just been sorting out all the bait, and today I'm going to do things slightly different to what I did in the match on Sunday. If you've seen that video, you'll know what I mean. If you haven't, go and check it out, okay? So, first line of attack is going to be the chop worms, okay? Lovely, fresh, dangerous. I'm going to chop a few of them up, feed a little ball in with some really dark ground bait, and I'm just going to fish a worm head over the top, okay? The idea is I want to get a few early perch in the net just to get me going, okay? What I'm then going to do is I'm going to set up a caster line, okay? It's a lovely day today, there's no wind. We had a little bit of rain yesterday, but the water still feels quite warm. So I'm going to start loose feeding casters by hand at about six or seven metres. I'm going to hopefully get those roach in the road coming in shallow. Failing that, what I've also got with me is some lovely breadcrumb. Okay, look at that, light and fluffy. And what I'm going to do is with that, I'm going to set up a little feeder rod. And the idea is I'm going to feed a little three or four hole cage feeder bit of bread punch tiny little bread flake on the um, on the hook and as a backup if that doesn't get a bite from the roach or the bream I've also got some white neons okay and I'm gonna double pair it so I'm gonna put one of these on a little bit of bread and so it creates a neutral buoyancy and hopefully that will just pop it up off the deck above the weed and we'll tempt in those bream um, or some of the better quality roach so fingers crossed that's the plan stick around let's see what happens Right then folks, so it is game on, just going to make the last little bit of prep of this uh, ground bait, just added in a little bit of liquid worm just to give it that little bit of boost and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kick off both swims with a pole pot of chopped worm um, and then I'm going to just fish a worm head off at top um, and we'll see. It might be a little bit of, of a case of, of nabbing two or three fish from, from one swim then dropping into the other for two or three fish and just keep rotating lines um, and we'll see what happens and as I say we've got the we've got the bread punch as well so what I'll do is I'll uh, if needs be I can always cup in a little bit of uh, bread uh, breadcrumb and just fish a tiny little bit of bread punch over the top and just see that ground bait is lovely. You started already, Adam? Yeah, I've started already. Terrible. I was waiting for a whistle or a hooter or, or something. We've been had already, folks. We've been had. We've been had already. 
being had. Terrible. Shocking. Don't matter though. We're going to bash them reef up. Right then. Yeah, I'll nip over if I need to, mate. Right then. So, got a nice far bank marker, which is a really, really tiny, small tree. So I'm making sure everything's lined up. And where I've plumbed up, I've actually got a nice little flat area, which is uh, ideal, really, because uh, everywhere else it is just incredibly slopey. It, it drops off. It, it, it goes from about four foot down into about six foot, and it just keeps on going, basically. So I found a nice little area that's about what we got on there. What we're saying there, it's about four foot, three and a half, four foot, and that, that's where I've just fed that load of uh, chop worm and caster in. The line that's straight in front of me is about six and a half foot, so it's nice and deep, but again, I found a nice little flat area that's on a slope, so hopefully that should be enough just to get me a few bites on that little area there. Um, so we'll see, I'm going to pop in a bit of chop worm over there as well. Not going to feed any casters as yet. Ideally, I just want a nice bit of ground bait in there, a few particles, and we'll just see them. So, again, just lining up with that marker, which is just the right hand side of one of the platform boards. I'm just going to drop that in. dropping straight on that right hand side now into that slightly shallower water I think um, that's going to be the best option to snag a couple of early fish yeah you just got to be as accurate as possible um, with any type of fishing but more so now we're getting into winter um, you've got to make sure that, that you're getting those fish exactly where you want them it's okay if, if you lose feeding you can draw them in uh, just feeding by hand, but once you've got them in your swim, you want to really then switch to a pole pot and really, really zero them into a specific little area in your peg. Uh, you've got more chance of catching them uh, faster that way as well. So, there we go, a nice little perch to start with. Right then, so we're off the mark. Nice little perch to start with. That's what I was expecting that we would get uh, stuck into first of all. So, anyway, up, oh, John's in. Oh, I've got two rats right next to me, which isn't helping my nerves at all. So, I'm just getting an odd indication on the floor nothing um, nothing bite wise uh, we had that one little perch um, just missed a bite there but I don't know they're a little bit just seems a little bit finicky already to be honest so I don't know if they're just not quite settled yet over that ground bait um, We'll see. I'm just going to give it another another three or four minutes and just see. Um, and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go on to the deeper line. Um, again, just going to start off with a little bit of chop worm and see. Um, just give this side a chance to settle. I will top up with another ball of ground bait and just leave it. Um, they're a bit bit finicky i thought we'd have had a couple more fish by now um but it is what it is it's it could be that that rain has just um slightly put them off a little bit uh it'll take them a little bit of time to settle today i don't know it was really cold last night actually after it finished raining the sky cleared and it did get cold 
so it's a matter of finding what depth these fish are going to be happy feeding at um, and I think it's a little bit too early to be fishing this shallow to be fair um, I'm going to give it another couple of minutes see if we can't attempt another bite and if we can't then I'm going to go going on that six and a half foot and just see because I think they might prefer the colder water the slightly deeper water for now um, but we'll see we'll see normally if you lift and drop especially if there's a lot of perch around they will intercept it within about 30 seconds I think they just like to react to that movement there we go Number two, bang in the top lip. Right then, I'm going to drop in on this deeper line. Um, see if there's anything down there. Just see, I'm going to pop in another little bit of ground bait and chop worm just on there, just to see. Um, get them going a bit. I'm going to cup in the uh, worms loose, I think. Let's chop them up. Nice little nugget of ground bait of at top, um, and then we're just going to leave that. And I think that might come good a little bit later on in the day uh, when it, when it warms up a little bit more. So we'll see. Play it by ear, can't we? Make some decisions based on what else is happening. So. We've fed that short line now, um, and I'm going to go in on the on the deep rig uh, just to see. And there we go. It's nice and deep, and we're not uh, we're not fishing far out at all. It's literally a top two plus three sections, um, and we're in about six and a half foot of water. It it does shelve off straight in front of me. It goes deep really quickly. Um, to the right hand side, there is a gentle slope down, uh, but where I've plumbed up there's a nice flat area um, just at the bottom of the slope so hopefully it'll be a bit of a patrol route for those slightly better fish um, let's see if we can't get into uh, a couple of the skimmers and stuff like that 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 have been showing recently and the other option as well is um, we can string this shotting pattern out um, fully into the bottom half of the of the rig and just fish a caster and just see if there's any fish mid-water in the water column um, that is normally how I would start um, just to see but when we're popping in that uh, chop worm and ground bait it is quite a heavy ground bait so it's going to get to deck quite quick and it, it's the skimmers that I really want to try and target today um, just to see because I think especially through the the colder months with the weather changing and, and looking at the match weights that have been coming out um, I mean I had two pound odd for for second um, so if you can get into a decent set of skimmers or some better quality roach straight away then it's uh, it's going to pay, pay better. See how it's straight in another perch like, but not to worry. Right then, so not what I was expecting to be down there, but at least we know there's fish over that bait now. So we can, we can hopefully start to find a pattern and build a pattern on that. Very, very important as well to be bang on accurate and, and pick a far bank marker that's not going to move through the day um, depending on what sort of venue you're fishing and stuff like that depends on what you're going to use I've got I don't know if you can see it on this but there's a an empty peg next to Adam and I'm just plumbed up with the left hand side of that board uh, so right on the tip of the board so I know if my float is in line with that my hand is in the same place on the pole uh, which is on the joint between the two sections I know that everything's going to be exactly where that ball of feed went in and again that's key um, 
obviously if you're on commercials you, you can really really tighten that up and, and pick out a daisy or a, a blade of grass and stuff like that um, depending on what you've got as markers um, but just maintaining that getting into that routine finding your your place on your pole if you need to mark it with electrical tape do that or just use a joint and just make sure everything's in exactly the same place every single time if you're out by a few inches it, it could mean the difference between a bite and not getting one do you know what i mean and especially on a place like this the match weights are so tight it's that one one three ounce perch could be the difference between second and fourth do you know what i mean so uh, john's in again by a look at that so he's found a few fish right on the end of them lilies so that's pretty good i think oh he's lost it got it for you mate right then let's make a decision what i'm gonna do because this line is so deep in front of me what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna feed some chop worm um with some caster and then i'll get a ground bait and i'm gonna see if i can just get some better quality fish coming out um because i think that's that's where they're gonna be i've got a funny feeling i'm gonna that line's gonna come good later on um but i want to be ready for it really when it does so that's the plan that is the plan because this is all about really a bit of a practice for uh, for the next league match to be fair so i want to try a few different things and just just chop it up and change it and um, we know the, the chop worm's going to work for perch and stuff like that but i want to find a way of just getting a few of the the bonus type fish really those those decent roach and those skimmers coming out i think if i can tap into them um we're gonna do quite well um so we'll see i'm gonna feed a little bit in not a massive amount i don't want to blow it to pieces um but the good thing is as well with us being in this area we've got quite a decent amount of open water um, so we can if we want to start up another swim so we'll give that a few minutes just to develop you're doing all right getting a few roach there right you know oh bream was it drop me pound now <laughs> <laughs> I've not fed it, I've just gone in with uh, a little bit of worm head off at top. See if there's anything milling around. Uh, I've just fed the, the line out in front of me. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So it could be a matter of just chopping and changing those lines a little bit, really. That's a big piece of perch, that one. So yeah, it could be, the pattern could be that we need to nick a couple of fish, pop it up, leave it and then uh, and then drop back in. So we'll see, but John's into the skimmers now and, uh, and the roach, um, which I figured he would from that peg. Uh, that's the peg that, that won the match on Sunday with £12 odd. Um, and this peg that I'm on now, Peg one was joint third with two pound three, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm not gonna worry overly. Um as long as we're getting a few bites and there's a few fish about, it's uh it is what it is, but it, it's more for me, it's more just practicing and just trying a few a few different things. Right, I'm going to give this another 30 seconds or so and I'm going to bring it out, I'm going to feed it again and just top it up with um, some chop worm and a bit of ground bait and I'm just going to rest it and I'm going to drop back in on the line in front of me just with a caster on hook, I'm going to feed some casters and some ground bait just before I drop in um, and I'm going to feed a caster straight through, I'm going to st string the shot out a little bit more as well just to see if um, there's any roach there intercepting it as it's going down and stuff 
and then based on what happens there over the next sorry, five or ten minutes is um, going to make my decision for me really um, I've got an option to set up another line just fishing uh, breadcrumb with a bit of bread punch on oak um, and I've also got the option of, of just bashing that feeder out a little bit as well um, just to see um, as I say we, we can fish bread punch on oak with uh, one of the neons and just see it might just tempt might just tempt a bream out or a, or a bonus tent or something like that you just never really know um, but John's definitely oh, I'm in a snag again John's definitely bagging up over there so um, I don't want to get uh, too far behind and have to play too much catch up um, so we'll see I was going to feed it beforehand but I'm not I'm just going to just gonna leave it and see because um, it did have a have a pretty good feed and I don't really want to be going too uh, crazy oh yeah well, that's another decent roach for John he is uh, on fire let's just say put him in shame folks what's going on putting me to shame I'm so so tempted to start loose feeding a few casters over the top um, oh, this is exactly the where it went wrong on Sunday to be honest uh, I got a little bit too giddy with feed and uh, blue peg apart to be fair um, and well to be honest I, I don't think I'd have uh, caught first anyway um, th there were no way I was going to get another 10 pound of fish out but um, it, if I think from this peg it, it might benefit from a little bit of loose feed going in over the top um, and if it doesn't if it does have a detrimental effect I've got other options of, of pushing further out or further to my left I've not touched any water from like 12 o'clock down to nine o'clock um, if you look at it as, as a clock face uh, 12 o'clock being straight in front of me I'm fishing at about one o'clock so I have got options um, so what I might just start doing is just loose oh, there we go is loose feeding a few uh, casters over the top and just see if we can sneak another um, better nice roach oh, we're getting no indications though again now i lost missed that bite um in the first put in uh, that felt like a really decent fish actually um but never mind uh, then the second put in we had that roach uh, i did loose feed some casters over the top out of a pole pot um and dropped the rig in through but we've had no um no indications at all since then so it's a bit uh a bit weird really but we'll see oh i'm not rigging that way uh, get that rig in uh keep trying to keep a nice tight line to it because it does slope i want to get it nice uh nicely down to where we've plumbed up um, That's better. You just see when I'm right where I've plumbed up because the, the tip is just about showing with the weight of uh, the caster on the hook. Um, if I was a little bit too further up the slope, it um, more bristle shows out. Yeah, there we go, straight into a fish. Um, just was a little bit lower down uh, on that slope, so the there's a few cruising around now just by the look of it on the bottom of that slope this one's not big at all but let's see it's up a roach anywhere and this is what we want to get into um, and again just relaying that rig so it was exactly where I wanted it to be uh, made the difference there with that one um, and that took it pretty much as soon as it's, it's settled um, 
and again it's it's all down or basically just being mega mega accurate um i mean the shotting pattern i've got on there now bearing in mind we're at six and a half foot the first shot is there okay and the hook length is there don't know if you probably see that on camera um oh no sorry top shot is there so we've literally got two foot and that is where the shotting is and when the rig goes down i want it laying just at the bottom of that slope and before I was a little bit too high up and the, the tip of the float was sticking up um, three or four mil more than normal. So I relayed that rig in to let it flow down, um, fall down, sorry, onto the bottom of that slope. Because when I've loose fed, any feed that's not getting intercepted on the way down is going to slowly roll down into it onto the bottom of that slope. And that's where we got that bite instantly. Um, and again, it, it all comes down to being mega, mega accurate. Um, and as you saw by being that little bit accurate and that little bit particular about how the rig was going in the water and how i was presenting the bait resulted in that fish straight away so it's uh, again it's just worth worth experimenting with things just trying different things and and seeing um there's no point sat when you know there's fish there um getting caught and and not doing anything to change your approach or or anything like that okay you've got to Gotta try different things. I don't particularly want to start loose feeding just yet. Um, although saying that, there are a few showing milling around, so I might um, it might be beneficial just to try and draw a few in. Um, and as I say, if um, if I blow it to pieces, I can always set up another swim um, a little bit further out or a little bit further round um, just to see. So. But yeah, there's uh, some decent roach down there now. It's just dropped in a little bit too far down that slope. It's a bit better, yeah. Oh, that's a better roach. important as well just to make sure all that slime and stuff is off off your line uh, see we, we missed that bite we're not getting any further indications now or anything um oh there we go i'm on that one on didn't i that was good I'm going to pop that rig in there and just say we've just got a worm head on the hook as I say we, we fed it a while ago now um, probably three quarters of an hour to be fair since we've been on it and this is the first put in since we've, we've fed it so if there's fish there hopefully we should get a bite relatively quickly so fingers crossed we'll see it'll more than likely be a perch but I don't mind, it's just interesting to see if there's anything there. Um, so I'm going to give it five minutes just to say, as I say, it is, uh, it's coming up to 12 o'clock now. If we had not had any bites or indications after those five minutes, then I think... Uh, oh, there we go, oh, that's a good fish. Oh, yeah. Felt big, it did feel big. Well, with that rig in. See, um, and that bite it did come it came within about a minute so with all the still fish uh, milling about oh there we go straight in again look oh, perch I knew it'd be a perch Roach. That's what we want. 
that is what we're on. And again, that was without feeding. I've not fed anything in there. I've not topped it up or anything. Um, so that is interesting. I think going forward through through the rest of autumn, certainly I'd, I'd, I'd need to base my attacks more on um, fishing to feed in the worm. Um, so, um, oh, that's another nice, that's a nice perch that actually lovely perch a few more fish out that sort of size and we'll be we'll be laughing we'll be catching them up let me tell you sure what Adam's had out he's, uh, he's had a few uh, a couple of nettables um, John's emptying his peg, um, which is annoying because I really don't want to lose this pound, folks. It's, uh, you know what I mean? It's a lot of pride at stake here for the channel. I mean, come on. We should, hopefully, get a bite within 30 so seconds, 30 seconds to a minute, I'd have thought. Ah, that's a diddy. <laughs> Did a little perch. So, right then. It is back in there so what I'm going to do is I think what I'll do is I'll feed that in again with the um, pole pot uh, pole cup rather and then just give it a bit of a rest yeah the other option I've also got as well is um, with the bread I can fish that on the pole as well um, it is a natural pond uh, there are ducks down here and where there's ducks people come down and feed bread don't they so the, the fish will be used to seeing it bloody train so anyway as i was saying the thing i'm doing where i'm feeding the casters is bang over where the line's going in for the feeder uh, so if the fish are mid-water intercepting those caster i'm going to get the little taps and indications on the tip as well so as of yet, there's not been anything, so <clears throat> just gives you another idea of, of what's maybe happening in your peg. Always good just to keep those options open, as I say. Um, and don't, be afraid, don't be afraid to try something totally different, do you know what I mean? It's, um, it might just be that bonus fish. See, see what happens, see if we can't nick another little fish. Um, Hopefully it won't be too little. <laughs> oh, skimmer. That's what we want. So what seems to be happening is you can uh, get a couple of fish, then you need to come off and uh, get a couple of fish somewhere else but they're not wanting a massive amount of feed that's the uh, that's the thing I've, I've kind of fed it and then we've left it for like half an hour three quarters of an hour and then gone back in without feeding anything and we're, we've, we're getting bites so the the feed that's going in is enough to to keep them there for quite a while to be honest and that is really interesting um so i'm glad i've not gone too crazy with feed to be honest um plus i'm using quite big baits as well yes john's using uh pinkies i think uh he's definitely feeding pinky i don't know from what he's got on hook uh he's probably got a range of baits to be honest i know he's got some soft pellets and some maggots and stuff like that so we'll catch up with him in a bit anyway uh so yeah what i'm gonna do is then um We've just had that nice little skimmer out of here. Um, that's a perch. <laughs> ah, just can't see the string together. Two decent fish. Ah, dear me. So, uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, get him in, and what we'll do is we'll swap onto that other line. Fish purely caster, and then just see what happens. Uh, 
no point fishing for those now. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. So what we're going to do is then, I will feed in some chopworm on that line and then just leave it again. Um, I'm going to pop in a few casters as well just to see. Um, Three big worm in there, get them chopped up, and that is it, that is all I'm going to feed. I'm not going to feed any ground bait in. just want to put the loose feed in the particles and just see. Um, and what I'm going to do is from there, after we've fed this, drop onto that deep line with a caster on hook, and then we'll see. Um, I need to feed me a uh, shallowish line again as well, just to see. Um, so we fed them in, so we made a nice bit of disturbance on the surface. Um, feeding them a little bit higher than normal. Oh. Right then, we start out, lay it in as best we can. Trying to avoid all them leaves. And we'll see, so this is the first put in for probably an hour, over an hour to be honest. So, so anyway, if you're enjoying the video so far, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and I'd love you to leave a comment below. Uh, when you hit the subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell and you'll be notified as soon as we post anything on the channel. Cheers, folks. Oh. Well, I've, had, I've had one skimmer and I was quite hopeful of a few more, but nothing happened, so. <laughs> Hi. That's a bit better. That was straight in as well. Jubbly. Right then, I'm going to give this another another five minutes and then I'm going to drop in onto that um, deeper line um, just with a caster. I fed it with neat worm, uh, chop worm and caster uh, before we dropped into this right hand side. So I'm going to give this another couple of minutes, drop back in onto there, fish on the deck. Uh, see if there's anything mooching about. John's still getting a fish a chuck almost <laughs> over there, over on the other side. So it's getting a little bit um, not depressing, but you know what I mean. It's uh, it's, it's, it's definitely one to quit, without a doubt, unless I can get a proper good string of uh, three or four bream put together, um, which I. I Oh, you just never know it, it might happen but it's that time of year the, no one's had any broom out of here for ages so it's uh, it's not looking likely at all to be perfectly honest so um, we'll just have to see oh just bumps one off oh come on man honestly a proper sitter of a bite there <laughs> ah, I give up honestly Right, so we're going to rest it. They're getting a bit finicky. They're not, they're not taking it clean, so they're not. Something's putting them off. They're not quite settled as they were. So we'll go back in with this um, and just say I'm not going to feed. I'm just going to drop in single caster. So the main difference is now um, 
from what I did on Sunday is I've not really fed much when it's gone quiet I've I've topped the swim up and then I've left it um, for at least half an hour um, before I've gone back in on it again and, and that seems to have just kept the the fish there really um, rather than filling it in with a ton of feed um, which had a, a detrimental effect and, and just killed it off it's I've I've been really really uh, conscious of the amount of feed I've had going in today so I was tempted to start loose feeding over top earlier um, but I tried that um, on this left hand swim that I set up and there was literally nothing there um, I was feeding that quite regularly with it with between like six six and then and ten caster every time uh, when I dropped in on it there was literally nothing there so it's um, it's worth trying it if you've got enough water in front of you to try something like that it's always worth trying so if the fish had a switched onto that caster line um, I could have just kept pinging casters out and, and catching them as they came through the water uh, but having said that it's been ages and ages since I've actually fed it so I might just drop in on it and see um, there, there might just be an odd fish mooching around there waiting for some more loose feed but we'll see and again that that is the good thing about having um it's like these little practice days these little sessions um in between just so you can try new things it, it's I'd, I'd never dream of turning up to a match with with a bait that i'd not used or not caught on um previously in in sessions uh, it, it's just too much of a risk too much of a gamble really uh, so if you can spend say 10-15 minutes trying something new away from the matches um just to see um it, it, it could pay dividends do you know what i mean and if it don't work at least you know not to bother with it in a match really um it, it just gives you more information um and sometimes it, it's as valuable knowing what not going to work as what is going to work um so you don't waste time trying six or seven different baits if only two or three are going to catch do you know what i mean so again just practice keep your options open don't be afraid to try different things do you know what i mean um and just see what happens you never know you might just get that lucky break where you drop onto a bait that no one else thinks you're using and and bag up right, i'm going to drop in on this uh right hand side again um with a worm head and just see um it's gone a bit dead everywhere really um for me um i've uh chopped and changed a couple of times though and I think that's had a bit of a, a bit of a detrimental effect really um, but it's worth it's worth trying um, a few different things through these sessions um, and through the day so it has been good um, so we've had quite a good um, mixed bag of fish really um, we got perched out really on uh, on Sunday which everyone did other than uh, the lad in peg 21 uh, he was getting skimmers and, and roach and stuff like that um, so we've had we've had perch that one skim bobs um, eyed a couple of roach um, so we've got we've got a good a good mixed bag of fish really and that that is is really what we're after um it's just working out what's going to be best on that particular day to uh, keep these fish coming you see so which they've been there pretty much consistently really um and we had that skimmer out of here as well so that was food for thought as well um again i've i've not fed really too much down here um i've, I've been feeding it through the pole cup um, and then just just leaving it and then dropping back in but when I've dropped back in I've not fed anything with it so the, there's fish there pretty much consistently really which is really really good but I've not wanted to stay on it all day um, and fish it out I've, I've wanted it as, a, as an extra line just to drop in on catch two or three fish and then move somewhere else uh, which is what has, has happened really um, fishing in the deeper water straight out in front I'd, I'd nick a couple of fish 
and then it'll go really really dead uh, so it'd need feeding and moving so I've chopped pretty much consistently between the two lines really we had a bit of a spell on the feeder um, with ground bait in it and some of the um, breadcrumb but that didn't didn't produce anything uh, no bites no nothing um, so it was a bit bit of a waste of time I tried the bread on the pole in the uh, deep water and again that didn't really produce anything so um, we can totally and utterly discount the bread um, for now I think um, on here uh, we're better off I think just with the caster line uh, chop worm line and um, I think some some pinkies with uh, with fishing a, a single maggot of at top will probably work quite well as well um, we'll catch up with John later to see what he's uh, caught the majority of his fish on uh, but he has had some out on caster so it could be after the the cold spell now the fish have kind of got used to of the cold water um, and that they're happy to come back on the feed again um, so that is that's that's quite good um, so I think from what I've what I've learned today um, depending on where I, I draw obviously um, it's gonna be definitely have a, a chop worm line with some dark ground bait lots of mud in it um, for those perch and, and hopefully the skimmers just fish chop worm uh, I've a change bait of caster but not feed any in just feed purely the worm and then set up a line as well and just feed a few casters in and then maybe have a third line of pinky and maggot on the oak depending on where we draw because uh, it can be quite peggy this place at the best of times um, so we've we've got options there and I, I feel now we've got a better plan of attack um, the, than what we had before so um, we'll have to see you know, as I say the, the match on here isn't for another week or so um, and a lot can change weather wise and stuff like that but I think this is it now really for winter it's uh, well certainly for autumn it's not going to be any more massive changes so we've we've got the foundation set so we can uh, we can build on that really um, for the matches and and just see see what happens Still a few there, so oh, we're getting an odd bite now and again, so can't complain too much, can we? Try to think if I've got a good uh, camera glitch effect for weighing on me. Uh, <laughs> Ah oh dear. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, best. Right. <laughs> 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 Tench for instant win. Get in. <laughs> in your face, Adam. In your face. <laughs> Get in, folks. Instant win. <laughs> I'm loving it. I thought it were pulling a bit hard for the roach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well chuffed with that. 
Well chuffed. <laughs> there we go folks, not big, but I love it. Awesome. Yes! <laughs> Uh, that's the first tench I've caught all year. <laughs> no idea. Oh, made up with that. Absolutely made up. Uh, quality. Right then, folks. So, I, I think it's definitely safe to say I've been well and truly battered today. <laughs> I'm not going to make any bones about it. Um, John's fished really, really well. And that, that peg's been doing really, really well um, in the matches and stuff like that. And I, I'm not taking anything away from him. He's, he's fished really, really well. Um, and it's, it's just been a bit of a finicky, tough day, really. Um, I've, I've struggled to get a consistent string of bites together. Um, but I've, to be honest, I've, I've learned a load and, and that is why I, I was keen to get down here again um, before the next match because I've, I've got a rough idea of what's going to work but I wanted just to try different things like, like the bread. Um, I thought the bread had really worked but it just didn't. Um, and a couple of other bits that I've tried through the day like the, the feeder and stuff, I, I thought with it being a little bit cooler, they, they might be feeding a bit better um, on deck, mid-water, in the deeper water. But again, it, it just didn't work. Um, so we'll just have to see. Um, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And to be honest, I know now I've got a good, a good idea of, of what I need to do in, in the matches um, and how I need to start approaching the rest of them, really. Um, for this for this league as i say the next one's in a couple of weeks um so we'll see what happens um but yeah stick around we're going to do the uh we're going to have a little bit of a cheeky way in and see um and then i'm going to probably cry because i owe john a pound um but we'll see so yeah stick around ah uh, dear right there so i've uh, just weighed in four pound 11 um which was really really cool a nice mixed bag of fish um, and that, that lovely, lovely tench, I was absolutely made up with that. Um, the lad that fished here on Sunday weighed in £2.3, he was joint third. So to get £4.11, I'm mega, mega chuffed. Um, but I think what, what's kind of happening across the lake is because they've got used to that cold weather, they're now switching back onto the feed. Um, and hopefully it, it'll improve before we have another really, really bad cold snap. Um, but yeah, I'm absolutely mega chuffed with that. So I'm going to get me, me gear put away. Uh, we're going to go around and, uh, and weigh John's gargantuan net. Um, give him a quid. Um, and yeah, we'll see. But stay tuned, we'll go see what he's weighed. £9.2. £9.2, nice oh, it's, uh, it's done me, I think. It's done me there. Right then folks, so it's it's all over and I got battered. I'm not gonna lie, I got battered. Um, but it's been a really, really good, enjoyable day and my main purpose of, of today was to have a practice for the next match on Sunday and to be honest, I've learned loads more than I would have done if I were catching constantly all day. Um, and that's, that's what it's all about for me. Um, Adam's beating me up, shocking. John's beating me up. I'm gutted, but I caught a tench, first tench at year, get in. So I'm mega, mega chuffed with that. Um, 
Well, yeah, there's your quid. <laughs> See you later. Thanks, that was a little bit begrudging, but I'll treasure no, it. No, fair, fair play to John. Is um, he fished really well, as as you'll know through the commentary on the video. Is uh, yeah, makes me sick. But anyway, well, I'll be back again, folks. Stay tuned. There'll be plenty more to come. We might even have another knock up again in the near future. So uh, thank you for watching. Hit subscribe. Hit the, the notification bell and leave a comment below as well. Catch you all later.